Hey there. <coughs> a couple of weekends ago, I worked on this painting, which is acrylic ink on Upo surface. And it's sort of like a plastic um, or sh shiny printer paper. Um, so there's this one, which was the balloons. This was the very first one that I had done with the alcohol inks. And then I also worked on this one next, which is, um, you know, supposed to be like bubbles on a surface. And something interesting is this one was done with isopropyl uh, alcohol, which is this one here. And it's 91%. It's very hard to get right now because of people using it to make their own hand sanitizer. So in this one, I actually thought about it and I thought, well, it's a bit of an experiment. So I <clears throat> found this, which is clear, ever clear, 95% grain alcohol. So this is ethyl alcohol or ethanol. This one is isopropyl. And the difference is you can only drink the um, grain alcohol. Um, <clears throat> No alcohol will be consumed in the studio today, but I just wanted to share that it appears that you you can actually use the um, grain alcohol as well with the alcohol inks. So <clears throat> as you can see here, I'm really happy that today um, my yellow and my orange came in. Uh, it's a Sunday here in uh, Oklahoma and FedEx delivered it, so pretty excited. I ordered a lot of these. Some of these I bought at Dick Blick, uh, sorry, at Hobby Lobby. This is the Brie Reese brand. I uh, hope I'm holding that right. I haven't actually recorded myself very much, so thank you for bearing with me. And then these are the um, Ranger alcohol inks, which I purchased online from Dick Blick. So I haven't used those before, but I don't imagine they'll be very much different. So let's talk about paper and the different surfaces. So I have got, um, what I worked on first was the Upo paper. So you can see the brand there, Upo, Y-U-P-O. And this is a five by seven sheet, which I have. And then I also have some of these eight by tens. And I purchased the Upo actually online. Um, <clears throat> Jerry's Artarama. Uh, again, Yupo. I also have this large one, which is, it's a heavy duty uh, thickness. So it's a little heavier in weight. It's like 144 pounds and <clears throat> which is 390 GSM. And it's called their heavy, as you can see here. And this is an 11 by 14. And that's what I'm going to work on today. <clears throat> Okay, so what I've done here uh, is mix. So I measured out two teaspoons of um, alcohol. I'm using the Everclear this time. And I've put one teaspoon of my ink into that. So I just use a kitchen measure. I hope you can see that. So just a teaspoon into the two teaspoons. This color is sunshine yellow. my sniffling and probably scratchy coughing uh, allergies are just rampant right now so now you just have to think about your design I've checked out this paper the Yupo heavy I don't feel a discernible difference from one side to the other so um, this one feels good I'm just gonna go with this so these are just something I had lying around these little bowls um, probably not the best because with a smaller container, you've got a you know, fairly smaller drip pour section and it's perhaps a little more accurate. So I'm just going to start by pouring some of the orange on. I like the splashes. You'll uh, have to experiment with those yourself. So And have a paper towel handy. I mean, I'm just working on my art bench here, so I'm not too concerned. But you can, if you're 
worried about making a mess then definitely just use a paper towel to wipe off the bottom of your bowls this is the yellow so I'm just going to pour on a bit of purple it's a beautiful color and my daughter who lives in Australia had requested um, purple orange green and blue so you can see if they, how they're running and they create nice patterns look at this turquoise it's a gorgeous color wow that's really nice Make sure your surface is flat. You can see perhaps it's because I'm working out the back. Uh, my studio used to be an old patio and I don't think the floor is completely level. So you do get a little bit of runoff, but you can just pick your um, paper up and move your colors around as well. So you can get some nice movement in your inks. I don't really think I've got a lot of room left for yellow. Let's see how that looks course yellow mix it with the blue and you'll get some greens I think that's enough for now so I'm just going to let that dry up a little bit before I put my glasses on I did um, pick out my sizes and my shapes and experimented with what the placement and where I wanted those to go before I started so yeah let's see how this uh, dries up just a little bit just uh, don't want it as quite as runny and as wet as it is you can use um, an embossing heat gun or um, a hairdryer I've got a hairdryer here so I'll probably give that a blow uh, I'm not going to do it on camera because it's always so noisy so yeah I'll be back okay so this has started to dry off just a little bit just get the excess off and I am now placing my glasses. I mean, you can use any shape. I just like the whole bubble look. That's why I'm doing this. So yeah, if it's too dry, I just pour it. I had a spot that I had dried too much. So I just put uh, a little more wet ink down. And it does help if your bowls and your glasses are sort of on the heavy side because they uh i had one the other day when i was doing it and it just slid right across the paper so that was interesting um yeah i think i'm getting some shapes here they tend to lighten in the middle a little bit so now i just have to leave that i can dry it off with the hair dryer a little bit and just see i like an odd number so i've got five here oh actually i've got six with this little one down here and uh it's not doing much, but maybe I'll pour a little more ink down there and we'll see how that goes. Okay, so this is pretty dry in some spots. Uh, there's still, especially where the glasses are placed, there is some, uh, it's still got wet ink. So I just carefully take these off. Sometimes if you leave them too long, they will stick. Um, I've seen one where the paper tore a little bit, but this Yupo, it's pretty hardy. So I'll just take these off carefully. Now that little black plastic thing, it was so light that it kept blowing around. So uh, I took it off. I mean, you can see you've still got a fairly good circle shape there to work with. So what I also did was um, I hit my paint with this isopropyl. Um, as you can see, it's got some really nice little uh, cells forming on all of that. So yeah, I uh, don't mind that look at all. And you can use it to whatever degree uh, you prefer. I love some of the marbling and some of the colors that are underneath where the glasses were, especially this one here, this one. Um, and we'll take advantage of those shapes that are in there because these are going to be bubbles and I'm going to use some of the naturally occurring shapes um, for my bubble reflections, which I will show you in the next step. So, so this next step, I it's pretty dry to the touch 
and I'm going to go around my glasses or you know whatever other items that you choose to use and this is a white acrylic paint pen and it wouldn't hurt I don't have another a thinner one at the moment but it would be good to get different sizes and then you could definitely vary the sizes that you um, outline your bubbles with so I will uh, obviously have to do some more online shopping and there's been a little too much of that I think at the moment with uh, in this house anyway and this is the little one that kept moving but I can still go around it and as I said a, a finer tip especially on this size would be a, a good idea all right so now we've gone around those the next step is to put on some reflections so you'll see what I've done on this one my bubbles they have the lovely rounded reflections that you see um, if you've observed bubbles so basically I just will go around and if there's any imperfections like especially um, maybe on this one see it has a shape so I went around that shape and this one has a really good shape over here and put some dots on there in between <clears throat> as you can see that's uh give you a close up of that one and there's there's room for correction as well so just don't be frightened get in there and you know have a go as we say in Australia have a go so I will just continue to mark mine up and then I'll come back and show you the progress As you can see here I'm pretty much uh, almost finished I'm just going around and adding a few little white dots just to um, make it cohesive it's just sort of how I see it and this is your artwork so you get to decide I'm pretty much feeling happy with this and that I'm done so this is um, my finished piece I'll give you a bit of a close-up there you can see the cells and the bubble shapes and that's how I had originally composed the painting but actually I'm sort of liking it this shape now I'm trying to not get reflection on there so it'll be up to uh, if my daughter likes it and she wants it she can have it and um, she can hang it whichever way she wants so there you have it I hope that was helpful and if you have questions make sure you message me on in, uh, Facebook <clears throat> or Instagram depending on uh, I'm not sure which platforms I'll put it on but I uh, had some friends who would ask me how I was doing that and how I used alcohol inks and by no means an expert this is just um, it's fun play and we sort of need some of that as an escape right now so um, yeah there you have it alcohol inks on UPO paper this size was the 14 by 11 have a great day just wanted to pop back on quickly and say that you can seal this with an acrylic spray I don't have mine handy at the moment but um, seal it all in so that there's you know if anybody was to touch it there's no uh, chance of the colors shifting now you do have to be careful what sort of acrylic spray you use I've heard that uh, certain ones will dissolve some of the alcohol ink um, I'll try and find out which brand it is that works best and I'll post that in the comments of uh, when I put this video up. Thanks.